I'm Brian Jensen. I'm with UW Extension's Integrated Pest Management Program. For the next few minutes, we'd like to talk to you about some of the early season insect pests that we have on corn. If you have any questions on uh, insecticide recommendations, I would suggest you go to our annually revised publication titled Pest Management in Wisconsin Field Crops. It's available at the Learning Store. You can see the URL at the bottom. And if you did a search at that site for publication number A3646, that should come up as your top choice. The early season insect pests that I'll cover are black cutworm, billbug, stalk borers, hot vine borers, and also slugs. Black cutworms, a lot like armyworms, do not overwinter in Wisconsin. There are four or more generations per year, but it's only that first or second generation uh, that can cause a problem on seedling corn. The adult is a moth, and for the most part, unless we're running black light traps, we're not concerned with what the adults look like. But the larvae are kind of a nondescript grayish color larvae, uh, up to maybe an inch, an inch and a quarter long. What is important is that the, the females have a oviposition preference. That is, they have preferences where they want to lay eggs. They do like crop residue. And of the different types of crop residue, they really prefer soybean residue over that of corn or and corn over that of wheat. wheat. And that's important as we're spot checking seedling corn. <clears throat> I would suggest that you pay more attention to corn that's planted after soybeans. The females also like weedy areas to uh, come in and lay eggs as well as low wet spots. So those three situations, crop residue, weedy areas, low wet spots, are areas that I would go to when I'm spot checking for black outworm damage in seedling corn. Here's a shot of what the larvae look like. Um, various stages of development. They're pretty nondescript, kind of grayish color, some black dots on them, but for the most part um, there are no really identifiable characteristics for black cutworm. What is identifiable with black cutworms is their type of damage. Small larvae on uh, anywhere from V1 to V4 corn will chew small holes in the leaf. Larger larvae on V1 to V2 corn will cut plants at uh, ground level. And finally, larger larvae on you know, V3, V4 plants will burrow into that corn plant below ground. Your above ground symptoms will be what some people will call wilted whirl symptoms and others dead heart. Uh, basically what that means is that the emerging leaves from that whirl are wilted. Here's a picture of what small larvae can do on, on uh, any stage of corn plant. It's usually small holes in the leaf. Although not economic at this point in time, it is a sign that black cutworms are feeding in that field. And again, not economic, but it's a sign that you need to be back in that field uh, within the next few days up to a week to see how that damage is progressing. Larger larvae on small plants, uh, as I mentioned earlier, V1, V2, maybe even V3 corn plants, will cut that plant off at ground level. And larger larvae on a V3, V4 corn plant will burrow into that corn plant below ground level and feed at the growing point. And here's a, a good shot of what I'm calling this wilted whirl or dead heart. That is the newest leaves that are emerging from the whirl are wilted. That's a sign of black cutworm feeding, but other early insect can cause that same type of symptoms. But we'll go through that uh, in a little bit later in this slide set. To scout for black cutworms, I would suggest that you walk a W-shaped pattern in the field, count damaged plants in five sets of 50 consecutive plants to get a good random estimate of the amount of damage you have in that field. 
also would suggest that you dig up two larvae uh, in each of those sets to, to determine instars. And that's important because we need to understand what our preventable loss for that field will be. We can't resurrect damage that happens already, but we have to look at the size of the cutworms and try to determine how much longer they will be feeding, and that's going to factor into our economic threshold. Those larvae will be found usually close to a damaged plant and in the soil, usually within uh, two inches of the plant, and typically they'll be at that, that line between dry soil and wet soil. The economic threshold for black cutworms is when you find 5% uh, damage plants and the larvae should be 5th or 6th or instar or smaller. To determine what instar you have, you cannot go by the length of the, of the cutworm, uh, but rather you have to look at the width of the head capsule. There is a copy of this head capsule gauge in A3646 and basically what you try to do with those captured larvae is try to find the box of best fit. Uh, try to fit that head in between that box and that will correspond with your instar stage. It's important that your uh, larvae are, are relatively small before you try to uh, control them. If, for example, you had all seventh instar larvae, they will not be feeding that much longer in the field, so you're not going to have that much uh, preventable yield loss. So I, I guess what I'm getting that is spraying, if you have mostly uh, sixth or seventh instars, will not pay you a benefit because there will not be that much more feeding. I'll talk a little bit about uh, bill bugs. Uh, they're an occasional pest, but I do want to cover them a little bit because uh, the damage um, can be confused with other early season corn insect pests. Again, the damage is usually non-economic um, and it's usually associated with a history of grassy weeds and or yellow nut sedge in seedling corn. The one point I do want to bring up with bill bugs is that the original feeding site will always be above ground. Here's a picture of what an adult bill bug will look like, uh, maybe three of three eighths of an inch long, very dark colored, and like all weevils, they have uh, a long snout on them. And in this particular picture, that that adult is starting to feed on the outside of that uh, seedling corn plant, and it will that feeding site will always be above ground. Here's a picture of what that uh, feeding can look like. Again, this is from feeding farther down on the corn plant when that adult is chewing a hole in the leaf, uh, into the, the side of the stalk rather, where the leaves are emerging. And typically, although not always, feeding injury from uh, bill bug will be more elliptical in shape. But again, not economic but can be confused with other early season uh, corn insect pests. Stock borers uh, overwinter as eggs on perennial grasses. Typically those perennial grasses will be either quack grass or wire stem muley. In the spring when the eggs hatch, the larvae will feed on those perennial grasses for a short period of time. Their body gets too large for those grasses and then they migrate to corn and it's during that migration from the grasses of the corn is where they're most uh, easily controlled. Usually that damage is going to be near fence rows or grassy waterways, terraces and things like that. There will always be that association with perennial grasses. The damage can be throughout the field if, if we had significant uh, perennial grasses the previous year when the adults were laying eggs, but usually, by and large, uh, most of their damage is going to be near fence rows, grassy waterways, terraces, and for the next uh, uh, two, three, four, five, maybe ten rows in, 
from uh, those grasses. Initially, the stalk borer will feed in the whorl and cause a slight scarring on the leaves, and then as they get a little bit bigger, they'll tunnel into the corn stalk. The adult is a moth, and again, unless we're monitoring black light traps, we're not concerned what they look like. The larvae will be maybe up to an inch and a half long, uh, certainly inch and a quarter. They'll have a tan colored head, also kind of uh, black to pale yellow striping throughout uh, from the length of the body. But most importantly, I think in uh, common stalk borers will have this black saddle. They are the only insect that I know of that has that, that black saddle. And I'll show you a picture of that in, in uh, one of the future slides. For managing common stalk borers, uh, start scouting at corn stage of V1 and determine the percent damage plants. Your best spray timing where you're going to get your, your best control is that point when the larvae are migrating from the perennial grasses to corn. That's when they're going to be exposed for the most part and that's when you'll get your best control, but you certainly have to make sure you get that spray application prior to the point where they have tunneled into the corn stalk. Once they have tunneled into the corn stalk, you cannot control them with an insecticide. Here's a picture of the larvae. Uh, kind of, a, again, a tannish colored head. You can see some alternating striping uh, for the length of the body between kind of a blackish or deep purple color and a pale yellow color on the lighter stripes. But this is what I call that saddle. That is a continuous band, a black or dark colored band, and it starts right behind the legs and continues on for a few body segments. Again, um, that is the only insect that I know of which has that black saddle. Here's a picture of what young larvae can do when they're feeding in the corn whorl. Um, not necessarily feeding through the leaf. They're causing more of a window painting, a light scratching on the leaves. And as the larvae get a little bit bigger, they will burrow into the corn plant and you will get your, your above ground symptoms will be this uh, wilted whorl or dead heart of the plant. And one final observation with stalk borers is that their feeding will always be their entrance hole into the corn plant, will always be above ground level, and here we can see some of the scars of when they burrowed into that corn plant. And, and, and finally, with stalk borers, typically their feeding is going to be along the field edge next to terraces, grass waterways, or fence rows. Because the adults are laying eggs on those perennial grasses the previous fall. A very close relative of the common stalk borer is the hop vine borer. To identify them, they have a tan colored head much like the stalk borer has, but their body is kind of a whitish or cream colored, uh, is white or cream colored. They do have a, what we call a set of false eyes right behind the head. And I do have a picture of that to show you in just a little bit. Their life cycle is very, very similar to that of the stalk borer. That is fall laid eggs on perennial grasses. The damage symptoms, at least the above ground symptoms are somewhat similar to stalk borer. You will not see the scarring on the leaves or holes in the leaves. Instead, you will see either the wilted whorl or dead heart symptoms, depending on what you want to call it. But the entrance hole for hot vine borer will always, always be below ground level. They enter that corn plant uh, below the surface of the soil. Therefore, our management is going to differ uh, just a little bit. The timing of the treatment is going to be very critical for hot vine borer. We have to have that application on from that point where they're leaving the grasses and migrating to the corn. 
because once they leave the grass, migrate to the corn, they burrow into that corn plant below ground level, and you cannot control them with an insecticide application. So therefore, with hot vine borer, we, we do want to scout for them a little bit, but for the most part, we want to rely on our field histories. If last year we had significant problem with hot vine borer, uh, the best time in an application for that next year corn crop would be when we start to see some of those, ini those initial signs of hot vine, vine borer feeding. Because that timing of application is so critical, um, we want to be ready when we first start to see those wilted corn plants. Here's a picture of the hot vine borer. Again, a tannish head, kind of a cream-colored body. And this is what I was talking about with those false set of eyes. They're pretty apparent on most instars of hot vine borer. Here's a picture of uh, that dead heart or wilted whirl. Uh, again, that is damage coming from hot vine borers burrowing into that corn plant below ground level. Some of the other uh, feeding scars you see on this leaf is from uh, slug feedings, and, and we'll cover slugs in, in just a little bit. Here's the soy line, and here's our entrance hole from hot vine borer. And that will, again, will always be below ground level. With slugs, uh, I do want to suggest that they're not an insect, they're a, a mollusk. Therefore, our insecticides do not control slugs at all. There are pests on corn and soybeans. However, of the two crops, soybeans are probably much more susceptible to slug feeding than corn. Uh, the feeding scars left from slugs is what we call the window painting. Uh, and I've got a picture to show that in just a little bit. But that's from the slug feeding on the leaf, uh, not going completely through the leaf, but maybe leaving part of that leaf cuticle intact. And it kind of looks like a, a window. The, uh, the damage is often associated with uh, wet weather, uh, crop residue, and also weeds. Any environment that will help shade slugs from the hot, dry sun will uh, uh, promote uh, their survival. Anytime slugs are, are left um, out in the uh, direct sunlight, that will really increase mortality. So those situations that help uh, 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 shade slugs from the hot sun, uh, weeds, uh, crop residue, cloudy weather, that will help to promote slug damage. With slugs, there are really no good economical rescue treatments. Uh, there are baits that can be available, but they're often quite expensive and not worth, uh, not economical to use on, on corn, certainly. At times, maybe on uh, soybeans, but uh, for the most part, we don't have economical rescue treatments for slugs. Slugs will feed almost exclusively during the evening hours. If it's a real cloudy, uh, cool day, perhaps raining, we can see some slug activity during the day. Here's a picture of what a slug looks like. They're essentially, they're a snail without a shell. We do have a few different species of slugs in Wisconsin. Their feeding symptom, symptoms are very diagnostic. Usually you'll see elongated feeding scars and this scar right here is a really good example of what we call window painting. Some of the other scars, uh, the slug may have fed completely through the cuticle or the cuticle has weathered out. That's the end of our early season above ground corn insect pests. We also have YouTube videos available for early season below ground insect pests or corn, mid season corn insects, as well as late season corn insects. If you have any questions on, again, insecticide recommendations, please consult our, our pest management in, in Wisconsin field crop publications 
at the Learning Store, number A3646. Thank you.